it's the third week here. I thought I was going to be finished with it last week, but that's why I want questions to be held till the end, or comments to be held to the end, so I can get through as much information as possible if I can get over um, with Islam and then begin with Buddhism. Okay, that's the next, that's what we're going to be going through for the next um, two weeks. Okay, um, I wasn't expecting to spend another week on Islam. Okay, but um, there's some things that I do want to go through. And see, the reason why I be going through these different religions is so that everybody can have a overall general conception, okay, of what each one details. So that when a person of the Islamic faith approaches you about your belief system, just like the Christian do us, whenever, whenever, you got some comments in order to share with them about what they believe in in order to even elevate them to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Just like we do with Christianity, that's good. I hear everybody talking about the Christianity, but nobody know Islam well enough in order to go in depth about it, in order to bring a person from Islamic traditions out of it into a more metaphysical tradition. So that's basically what we're going to teach tonight, is how to do that, what to look for, um, the ideologies of what Muslims or Islamic um, beliefs are situated in, and how to um, refine them into a more metaphysical overstand it, okay? So, last week, for those that was here, y'all got a chance in order to um, witness the breaking down of Islam, and basically, I'm told y'all that there was no Muhammad. Muhammad didn't exist just like there was no Jesus. It was all fictional, mythical characters created by the Paisos family from our ancient traditions in Africa. And that's point blank. Now, Last week, I went over some of the ways in order to prove it, but I'm going to do just a tad bit so we can go more in depth. For example, last week, we went over the fact that who knows anything about the Roman Catholic Church and the so-called Holy Mother Mary? Well, if you know that another name for the Holy Mother Mary is... Fatima. Fatima happens to be the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. Now check this out. They give Fatima within Islam the same characteristics as they give the Mother Mary, the Virgin Mother Mary, the Mother of Jesus or the Mother of God in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. The exact same characteristics. That means they was not actual people if they had to put characteristics to them. The characteristics that they took and put to them was in Revelation the first chapter, I mean the twelfth chapter the first verse. And this is what we're going to read. Revelation the first chapter. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now they give within Christianity or Roman Catholicism that attribute to that woman being Mary. Within Islam, they give this attribute to the daughter of Prophet Muhammad, Fatima. Now, this is a hell of a coincidence that Fatima name from Islam appears within the Holy Catholic Church. This is a picture of Fatima or Mary, the Virgin Mother. Okay, once again, I'm going to read it. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, we can sit here, and speculate that this is a prophecy because it's in the book of Revelations and you can do that if you are, if, if, if you want to and get fooled. This is not a prophecy. This is talking about the fact that of the right hemisphere of the brain is connected to the left hemisphere of the brain, which is that's the sun, is the right hemisphere of the brain, the moon is the left hemisphere of the brain, and circling the pineal gland are the 12 pair of cranial nerves. That is the 12 stars. Okay? This is talking about, that's why it says, a, a great wonder appeared, a, a great um, wonder appeared in heaven. 
Because this is heaven within the metaphysical realm. There is what is outside of you is an illusion. The only place that actually exists within you is your pineal gland, and embedded inside of your pineal gland is your soul. And your soul is God. That's what gives you the, the, uh, the electromagnetic properties in order to move your physical body or components to move your physical body. That is the energy that helps move you through this physical reality, through matter. Okay? Energy equal mass per constant speed of light. Energy equal matter. At the speed of light, it can be changed from matter into energy. Vice versa, from energy into matter. That proves that you are a light being, that you came from a light, not from no ape. Okay? That's where you came from, was from light. And being that you are the epitome of consciousness, that means light itself is conscious. So when we speak about these 12 stars, we also know that there's 12, what? Zodiac signs, which they, they call the stars or the constellations or the zodiac signs. So this means that this woman is also with an ancient Kemet or Egypt is the goddess Newt. Because if you go back, read this, read that for me while I hold on a second. Let me find my picture for you. And y'all get a better what understanding for? Newt? of what I'm talking about. A period of great wonder in heaven. Mm -hmm. A woman clothed with the sun and a moon underneath her feet. Mm -hmm. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Right. Hmm. This is the woman which art in heaven. Is the goddess Newt. This is off the walls of ancient Kemet. Okay? You go there to the walls of Seti 1, you will see this picture or hieroglyphics or metuneter. This is the goddess Newt. Here is Shu. Here laying down is Geb. Here is the ram-headed deities, Kunum and Amen, or Amen, which you say at the end of your prayers. Kanum, Amen. Kanum was the God who sat on his potter's wheel, who made the Ba and the Ka, which you call within your Bible, the Adam and the Eve, which is talking about not a physical component, but energy components in which that inhibits your physical body, your soul, and your spirit. Ba means soul, Ka means spirit. <coughs> and Kanun was the creator of this energy, a move or the, re or the mover through this energy. Okay? Because energy has to have something in which that moves it or motivates it or activates it. It's the god Kanun. Nun happens to be also the same deity that the Nomos or the Dogon tribe speaks about Nomo in which that in the last days will return. On his returning, he will issue himself into his descendants. This is the same thing as we're talking about Christ's consciousness or Christ returning in the last days, and he's supposed to be, and we're supposed to become what? More Christ-like. This is what it's talking about within the Bible that God poured forth his spirit upon all men of flesh, and old men had dreams and, and young men had visions. That's what that's what that is talking about. That pouring forth of spirit is the same concept as us entering into the age of Aquarius. The man with a pitcher of a man, which is symbolic to Aquarius, having a pitcher of water in his hand and the water pouring out, which is symbolic to the truth or to the energy or to the emotions being poured forth or spirit being poured forth into us. So as we receive this divine glory of truth, energy, there it is right there. They go, um, come on up here again, Geronimo. There you go. Thank, thank you. Keep, keep, keep helping me out there. <laughs> For Aquarius, you right. see the man, the man with the pitcher of the urn with right. water as he pours forth the knowledge and the energy out right. upon the past. Right. This is the age, the sign of Aquarius. This is the age of knowledge, of truth, of yeah. gods and goddesses. That's he's, that's this what is he's now the age. Right here, one of the earliest stories of the creation of the world was recorded in the literary uh, literature of Kemet in a document now called the Greenfield Papyrus. This text shows the nature, or netter, which is nature or force of a god, Shu, separating Newt from Gab. That's what that is a picture of. 
Shu is the same term as you would call your Messiah, Yahshua, which is Jesus, which is the same word as Joshua. Same word as Joshua. The word Yah means oh. Both in Arabic and Hebrew. Oh, Yah. Oh. Oh. Whenever somebody say, oh, yo, Dicko, y'all mean. Oh, yo, Dicko. Oh. Oh, it's not your name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a point or a prefix in which that is added on to show excitement, to show um, 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 discovery. You know what I'm saying? So, Yahshua, Shu had to be what? The Aramaic, Hebrew, real name of who you would call Joshua, which is Jesus. And Jesus itself is a concept. Shu means moisture. And it's talking about um, physically, within a physical body, within men, it's talking about semen. And how sexuality can raise the kundalini energy, which is also shu, because the <coughs> word for, check this out, you have the word shu, then you have the word within Aramaic, ya shu, wa, or either ya, like that. Ya means good, or either o, and sometimes I, and wa means bad. And shu is the middle path, balance. The mediator. Or the, what they call the divider. Okay? Shu itself means cause. What happens is that, what happens? The man determines the sex of the child. So he determines the split of the feminine to the, for example, it does not mean good and bad, but also mean feminine, masculine, or what also would be termed as positive, I mean positive and negative, okay? In this sense, Mag, um, feminine would be uh, magnetic, which would be seen as negative. Not negative in the sense of what we would think negative is, though. Masculine would be um, positive or electric. Okay? Now, so, you got the word ya shu Shu, uh, the one who took on the covenant after who? Moses, in the Old Testament. Then in the New Testament, they reinvent Yahshua and make him Jah or Jeshuas or Jesh or Jesh, which becomes Jesus. And they reinvent them in the New Testament. Because the science is that these both stories arrive and is derived from, I should say, from this deity from out of ancient Kemet, Heru, which means the God of light. That's why Jesus was synonymous with what? Light. And the way and the light. True. And what? And the light. Right. Right. That's why he was synonymous with light. This light, as we call it, resides at the base of your tails, um, on what is called known as your tailbone, which is called your sacral nerve, or what is also known as your eight divided cells of meiosis, or what is also known as your kundalini energy. Because that's the divine light in which that splits going up through the middle, which is your spinal column, which is 18 inches long, from the rooter to the tutor. 18 inches long, and that light divides the half of your body, the halves of your body. 
the left being feminine or magnetic or negative, the right being electric, positive, masculine. Until you get to here, then they switch places when you get here because it becomes a figure eight motion. Here, the right hemisphere of the brain is feminine, okay, and it is something good. The left hemisphere of the brain is masculine, and it used to be something bad. Because the right hemisphere of the brain, the left hemisphere of the brain is linear. The right hemisphere of the brain, the right hemisphere of the brain, which is feminine, is holistic. You know what I'm saying? So at the head area, which is the Holy of Holies, the energy switches places. So that's why Jesus was known as the divider, because Shu also represents the heart. Because it's at the heart that the soul splits or emerges from out of the emotions. Okay? That's why you ever see any of the pictures of Jesus, you'll see him with, if you go back to some old pictures, you see the heart right here. And you see the drone, the, um, the, um, the, crown, the crown of thorns thorn, 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 around his heart. Who ever seen that picture? That's what it's all symbolic to. That picture comes from out of the Rosa Cross, or Rosy Cross, which is Rosicrucian's order, which happens to be the 18th, quote unquote, step within Freemasonry. If you go to Freemasonry, there's certain steps that you have to go through, all 33 steps. The 18th step is the Rosen Cross, where you get the term Rosicrucian from. So one plus eight is the number nine, and nine represents completion. So the Rosal Cross came from out of the, uh, actually they, the Masons took um, the Rosicrucian information and made it the 18th degree within their so-called ritual or ceremony. The Rosicrucian information actually is Moorish science information. Okay, Moorish science information. And that's why we deal with the science of life because this is more science information. Is the science of life, which is actually what we call metaphysics or esoteric teachings. There was the spirituality of a person was never separated from the physical body. Because you can have one without the other as long as you're in the flesh. You have to deal with both components. And the only thing which that can help you deal with both components is Jesus. So the Christians are absolutely correct but they don't have the deeper concept or the deeper understanding of what Jesus actually represented. Jesus is spoken of within the Quran 25 times. And the reason why 25 is because 2 plus 5 is the number 7, which also represents a what? A completion. 7 is what letter of your alphabet? It would be the letter G. And G is the same insignia in which that Masons have within their so-called what? Compass and square. You turn the G sideways, what you have is that, is an I. So the science is, is that this G in the center represents the, actually the pineal gland or the seven crown chakra. Where, if you overstand, that's this what? Seventh chakra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is what? The pineal gland. So the G represents the pineal gland. Turn sideways, it's a physical eye. Okay? Show, 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 put it on a picture. Right? And at the, uh, as he was showing you about the lady um, with the sun symbol around her, this is the uh, tarot card for um, this particular sign. As you see, it's represented with the G as well. Uh, the uh, astrological sign that it corresponds with is Libra, which is balance, which would be the balance of the, both the physical and the spiritual. And that's one way of sending up all seven chocolates that you see with that right there.
that's what that symbolizes as well. And there's the G, which is a representation for that particular tarot card, which represents as the Empress. This G, we call it, see, Masons don't know what the G represents. They say that it represents geometry, and it's not just geometry, it's actually sacred geometry or geometria, which is actually um, um, the science of the numbers and how you use numbers in order to decode the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hispanic <coughs> and different other holy books in which they're all around the world. Because each one has a, um, a mathematical formula to them. Number, the, um, the Quran is based off of the number 19, all the way through. And the number 19 is symbolic to, like we said before, if you study what is called um, um, hyper-dimensional um, science, you'll find out that if you overlay this right here, which is actually a six-pointed star, let me do this better, because this look kind of tore up. You overlay a six pointed star, which you know this is basically what this is, or as we would do, if you overlay a six pointed star over any planet, you will find that at 19 degrees, 0 0.3, 0 0.47, 0 0.5, but it's always at 19 degrees you will see a certain influx of energy or uh, explosion of energy coming from out of each planet. Please cut the phone off. There's a planet in which that upswells as it, it manifests. For example, if you go to the planet Jupiter, if you took this symbol and put it overlaid over top of Jupiter, you will find that directly at 19.5 degrees, which is be right around here, you will find that big red dot. Who have seen the red dot on Jupiter? Mm. Okay. If you overlay the same symbol over the sun, you will find over the sun. Now, the reason why I'm giving you all of this is because I'm going to get into Islam and begin to have to destroy, basically, not destroy, but I guess, I don't know what you want to call it, but we have to go into it. If you overlay the same symbol over the planet Earth, you will see the Hawaiian Islands, and that will explain why that, um, that um, volcano activity keep erupting at that particular um, angle, which is 19 degrees. If you go to, matter of fact, the Quran speaks of it, that over it is the number 19. The Quran speaks, that it says that in there, that over it is the number 19, okay? So, if you overlay this on any of the planets in our solar system, if you do it on the sun, that's where you can see those solar flares and those mass ejections, what are called coronal mass ejections, come off from, in which that is producing the solar plasma off the sun. So that means that within this particular solar system, 19 um, degrees is what is over it. So whenever the Quran speaks that over it is the number 19, that's what it's referring to. Muslims think that it's talking about the Quran. The word Quran means cycle. A Quran is talking about the same thing as a possession of an equinox, which is 25,000 years, approximately, or 25,590, um, 92, 98, depending on who you ask, years. 25,928. Or 20 years, depending on who you ask. Okay. Now, what you're going to find is this symbol right here. This is actually what this is. The center, when it's turned sideways and it becomes the eye, is actually this the sun disc of Ra. The sun disc of Ra. And the sun disk is actually called Atan, which is, within your Bible, means Lord. And they call it Adon, or Adonai. Who ever heard of the Adonai? Adonai.
Adan was the same thing as out of ancient Kemet during the time of Akhenaten. He unified all of the so-called the forces of nature together in order to become or comprise one word. This one word was Atan, in which that the Hebrews, or which was nothing more than a, you got to understand is that Hebrew was the language in which that the ancient Egyptians spoke. It was a language in which that was taught within their ancient mystery schools or ancient metaphysical schools or, or universities. They taught this language there. Okay? Now, Atan is the same word as Adon. With the Greek word, you will find it Adonis. Adonis means master. Adone or Adone means Lord. Atan, as I showed you, is a symbol of Ra, once again, and it means basically representing the primordial point in the center, which is talking about the black dot, which is talking about your soul, and the creation in the outer center. Kabbalistic, Tepherfret, and Hebrew, Darth. This is where you get the term within Star Wars, Darth Vader. That's why he was what? Black. The voice of James Earl Jones. Okay? His body, his, um, body armor was what? Black. And the voice was that of a black man. So that's representing the atom, right? This also represents the atom and the subatomic energy in which that inhibits the atom. We would call this what the outer skirts will where be where, um, is where the electrons will reside at. Inside of it will be where. Well, that's okay. the cell. You're going through. We're going to do an atom first. We're going to get back to the cell in a second. <laughs> but inside of it will be what the neutrons. Yeah. Then right here, in which that inhibits the center of it, will be what is called what the protons. Okay. And then the outskirts in which that is around it would be what's called photon or light. And being that, if you notice, 99.9999% empty space, this is supposed to be filled with that photonic energy, that light. Why do you think they call it the sun disk and then it's of Ra? Ra means light. And I told you before that the science of behind so-called Jesus, or Yahshua, actually came from Haru. Ru, or either Ah, means light. So in order to become Heru, or as we call him, Jesus, or Christ, then you must absorb more light. And being that you are a melanated people, you have the proper gear for the job. <laughs> you are the best absorber, conductor, and transformer of all seven frequencies of energy. Coming from electro power energy or television, radio, wave um, on frequency, on down to um, a microwave, to visible light spectrum. Um, to UV rays or ultraviolet light spectrum, down to gamma rays, as well as the last one, cosmic rays. Would that correspond to the seven planetary rays? Of course. As well as also to the seven chakras. Because that represents each state of a different body that you evolve into. If we are right now at the lowest body point, okay, that means that we have seven more to evolve into. So even that means that you have the ability, you know, for example, that means if before you can graduate to the next level, you must first conquer the level in which that you're on. So that means before you can get from the physical plane, you have to master the physical so that you can go to the astral. And then master the astral while you're there in order to go to, in other words, it's a continuous journey. Now, if you don't master it, the physical, then you come back to the physical in order to do it over again. If you don't master the astral, then you continue staying there and you do it over again. You get what I'm saying? So that means that your journey in becoming God never stops. It's an ever-ending story. <laughs> Whoever seen that movie? 
And that's what it's talking about. Or eternity. Right. Or what we call everlasting or eternal. And that's why the scriptures speak of hell being eternal. Because if you don't get it right, you're going to be eternally damnated <laughs> to a particular level of existence. And that's hell. Now, maybe for you physically, because you might not be constantly aware, because light shot up in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. But the soul would say, man, God damn it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But you can't be back in this damn condition again. Why can't you just learn from your errors and let's move on? Now, no, it ain't. And guess what? That creates karma. When the soul is in, conf in, in conflict with the physical body, you're going to be paying some hell. Just that simple. Right here. This is the God Kanoon that I'm talking about. As you see, see the two bodies? Adam. And Eve. And that was taken off of what? Off the walls of Seti 1. And it reads, Kanun is one of the oldest natures, or naturals in the Nile Valley. His name means to mold or to model. We also call him the fashioner. But in Arabic, his name is Musaweru. Musaweru. It's the 13th attribute of Allah. Musaweru which means the fashioner, okay, Musa, mm. Musa, yeah, Musa where, you know, get back to, you remember, Musa, or who is Moses, was made a god unto the Pharaoh. He is often portrayed sitting on a potter's table, and before him stands the Ba and the Ka, your Adam and your Eve of the human being whom he has just fashioned from what? Clay. But this is not regular clay as we think thinking from the dust of the ground which that forms your physical body. It's the shell that encases the body of the car. Within each level, because you have seven bodies, the body being the highest and the spirit is your astral body. This story surfaces thousands of years later in Genesis when we witness God molding Adam from clay. The word Adam means made from the earth. And you said that was found on the, the temple walls. Thousands. Of Seti the first. Seti the one. Right. Seti the first. Right. Which he said. Yeah. The God said. Uh, right. Which has been around the era of 28,000 right. BC. Right. That's when it was written on it. Right, that's right. when it was just written it. Right. We don't know how long the story actually right. exists. Obviously, the story has to go back to almost 10,500 B.C., which would be equivalent to 12,500 years ago. Because that's when the pyramids were actually formed. As well, um, some say that the Sphinx is even older than the pyramids. That the Sphinx date back to over 90,000 years ago. Wow. So we're dealing with science in which that these Europeans went over. Remember, they, if you notice, within the last hundred years, all this technology just came about. How do you think they got it? Before they went into Africa, they didn't have this information. It wasn't until after they went into Egypt, Africa, Kemet, that they got the information for how to build what? Planes Airplanes. or jets, helicopters, because I can show you a picture of all of those things, hieroglyphics or metronetics, is there on the temple walls. In the temple of, um, of um, 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 Seti One, as well as also in the temple of um, Koma Obo, which is, the temple, which is the temple of Sebek. There is pictures of helicopters, pictures of aircrafts, space shuttles, or what we would call space shuttles what we call submarines, what we call the hovercrafts in which that come from out of Star Wars. All these things are right there on the temple walls in Egypt. Mm. They had this information over 10,500 BC, 12,500 years ago. This is, this is not, this nothing new under the sun. The white man simply plagiarized um, um, the, um, the um, drawings and he um, put them on paper sketched out, got the material in order to try to fashion it as close to possible as he could to the um, ancient Egyptians' um, um, technology. 
as you see, that's all he ever does is copy what we have already done anyway. I mean, think about it. We've been on this planet for over 24 million years, and he just came here 6,000 years ago. Who else would he copy? <laughs> he, he don't know Jack. Compare 6,000 years to 24 million. He don't know nothing, do he? He don't know nothing. He's a latecomer. So that means that he had to get all his information from those that's been here the longest time, and that's black folks, okay? And if you go all over the planet, and as he tried to deny, but then he slips up and have to tell the truth, we built all the pyramids. The ones you go over to China, you find that they was done by the Shang Li dynasty, and Li means black. So you can't get away from it, because every time they try, it shows up regardless. So this is just some of the things that we have to go um, go over and go go through. Now, the same thing goes with this religion that they call Islam. Same thing as with Christianity. It was made up of our mythos and off of the information in which that came from out of ancient Kemet. Also, Islam was too. There was no person by the name of Muhammad. Matter of fact, if we went over last week, the word Muhammad actually comes from the word Ma'at. Mo, which means water. Ham means black, which is cam, and my, which is my eyes. Mu is the abbreviation for Mu Sa, which is Moses, which means to be drawn forth from water. Mu means water. Ham means black. Ma'at means guide or justice or truth or reciprocity or balance or peace or order. So you got seven attributes. Now, let's put this together, the name Muhammad. Within Islam, Mu means one. So one drawn forth from the water of blackness. Mm. To lead towards what? Justice, truth. Balance, harmony, reciprocity. Now, Muslims would tell you that Muhammad is the same as the comforter within your Holy Bible. For example, let's go to the book of John. In the book of John, now of course the book of John was not written by John, it was written by Marius um, Pisos. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you the um, names of the um, ones who did the four gospels. Arias, Pisos, and Thilly. Okay? But you got to understand that they took this from off the walls of ancient Kenya. So that means that there's still valuable information in here. Because they took it from our information. So see, that's what I'm saying. They can't get away. See, the truth can never get away from us if you look for it. You can't get away from them because they keep making up lie after lie. They have the people that believe in, you know, they perpetuate myths. But we don't never have to get away from our information as long as we go back to our Afrocentric spirituality base, religion, or culture. That culture, that religion, is what helps us formulate our conceptions on God, on who we are by knowing ourselves and how we relate physically to the physical universe or what we see, touch, taste, and smell and hear. Okay? Right here. Now, if y'all don't remember the story, this is when Jesus tells his disciples that he has to go. And that if he don't go, then the one who's going to come after him will not come. Y'all remember hearing that before? Okay, let's, let's get into who that one is that's supposed to come. Because Muslims tell you, if you study what they say, that they will tell you that it actually is, quote unquote, Muhammad. Muhammad. Now, and I, this is the um, 14th chapter of John, starting at the first verse, or not the verse, let me, 10th verse, let me go to the 10th. Let's put this in one of Believe thou not that I am in the Father. And that the Father is in me, 
the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. So Jesus right there already told you that God dwells in him. So we, we can keep being wrong and, and thinking God is something outside of ourselves all we want. He doeth the work. But believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. In other words, he said, yo, you ain't got to believe me. You know what I'm saying? Yo, believe my works. If you, you don't believe nothing else, you know what I'm saying? If you don't believe that the Father is in me and I am within the Father, then yo, here go a physical manifestation of what I have done through the Father, that the Father moved through me and dwells within me. I have done this work. Can you deny the work exists? That's what he's saying. And then it says on the 16th, and I will pray the Father that he gives you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, a comforter is not usually a male form. This is John 14, 16. Now, y'all know who's the best comforters that you can um, possibly have? Thank you! Your mama! Yeah, ain't nobody can nurture you and comfort you than your mama. Men are not um, um, so-called the nurturing type because we've been in traditional ways taught to be simply the provider you know what I'm saying so the role of nurturing and comforting always came from the mother aspect so Jesus is telling you that I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter and that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it cannot, cause it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you or ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now, how the hell can a man be in you? That's how we know right here that the Muslims say that the comforter or the spirit of truth was Muhammad. That Muhammad could not have been a physical reality. Because Jesus right here says that for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now we go to the book of Acts and we find out that the Holy Spirit, that what remember in the upper room? After the um the um um, um after right, after right, well. After the little, you know, Jesus came and appeared in the room and he breathed uh, the breath of the Holy Spirit unto the disciples. And they began to speak in tongues, to do healings and all types of different um, attributes. And it says, mentioned before, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Gifts, of, of the gifts of, of, of God, as they call them. But the fact that they say Muhammad is, quote unquote, the spirit is true or the comforter, we have to go back that according to his name he, it is. That actually what they're talking about, the spirit of truth or the waters of truth or the waters of life as they call it the book of life this is all talking about something related to the physical body and you reaching that Muhammad state. Now you got to understand is that the third eye is often seen as Christ's consciousness. The seventh seat is often seen as something else. Now, we're trying to find out what is the seventh seal. If this is the sixth seal, which is the third eye, and that's relating to Christ's consciousness, then what is the seventh seal relating to? Well, we come to find out that Muhammad is known to be the last seal of the prophets. That's what Muslims call Muhammad. The last seal of the prophets. Now, the funny thing is, is that when we think of seals, let's go to Revelation real quick. Revelations, third verse. 
saying it hurt not to hurt neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So a seal is something in which that appears within where? You. Your forehead. Your physical body. Not as a person, per se, but as people, more so, per se. Not as one individual. This is Revelation, the seventh chapter, the third verse. And I heard the number of them which was sealed. They were sealed, 144,000, of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, we broke down many times before what Israel represents. Israel represents Isis, which is the is part, Ra, which is the sun god, and El, which would be, quote unquote, God itself. Now, the word El within the Phoenician term, which means flying phoenix, the word for Phoenicia means phoenix. That's where the word phoenix comes from. And you've heard of the story that the phoenix rise from the ashes every 666 years. Now, you know what 666 would represent. But the phoenix rises from the ashes every 666 years. So the phoenix, just like the Ba, which was created by Kanun, represents the soul. The symbol of the Ba is a bird. That's why the symbol of the United States is a bird. The eagle represents the same symbol, one who takes flight, who has the ability of flight. So the science is, is that Ba means soul, which is a bird, and phoenix is a bird, or a bird of what? Fire. This bird of fire is actually talking about the transformational state from the lowest seal, from the base chakra, through the second seal, the navel chakra, to the third seal, the solar chakra, to the fourth seal, the heart chakra, to the fifth seal, the throat chakra, to the sixth seal, the Christ chakra. Seventh seal, Mohammed chakra. Now, we went over this before that the that the lowest chakra represents Adam. Adam was made from what? Clay from the ground. That is nothing more talking about the clay is semen. The ground is nothing more than talking about the fact of making the physical body. Okay? Adam means made from the ground. The base chakra, the root chakra, happened to be the lowest one, and its element is earth. The base chakra is the lowest is earth. The next component is the navel chakra, which is the element is water, which is symbolic to Noah, Noah and the flood. Now, when now if it's now you got to understand that this is what is known as the abdominal brain. We have four brains, the cerebellum, the cerebrum, the, um, the, um, the, um, the, um, the medulla oblongata, and what is known as also the uh, frontal lobes. Those would be the four portions of the brain, okay? Now, the, the other component of the brain, if you want to say the frontal lobes, would also be part of the digestive system the small and large intestines. It looks just like a brain, just like the same way as you, you look at the brain, you look at the digestive system, it has some of the same nucleus of nerves, of bundles of nerves. Whenever these bundles of nerves located, um, located, then you find that there's a, um, um, a seat of consciousness in which that resides there. Because that's how chakras illuminate themselves through the nerve endings. The nerves become so refined till it becomes undetectable by a microscope. And it's at that point that light manifests through your nerve endings. Now, whenever you see workers or people who do, I say workers, but people who do energy work, or Reiki master, um, a Qigong um, a master, or Tai Chi master, or a Keto master, they deal with the internal mechanisms of Qi energy, Ra. That's what Qi is. Qi, the word Cha, Ra. Ra, chakra, the word ra at the end of chakra, the word prana, pra, pra, ra, ra, na, pra, ra, na, prana, that energy goes here. Whenever you see a Tai Chi master, they'll gather energy and put it here. They're always gathering the energy and putting it right here. This is what is called your lower dantian. 
D A N T E T I N E T I E N, excuse me. What is called your lower dantian. It is here that energy is put for reserve. You reserve your energy here. The more energy that you have reserved here, the better you'll feel. The more alive you'll be. You know what I'm saying? So the ancients knew all of this information. So that means you want to flood your body with energy. And which that gives you, which is based off the element of what? Water. So that's why Noah, or the word Noah, but you get the word nos. And the reason why I'm going through all these names is because of the simple fact that the Quran mentions the exact same names in the Quran. Okay? So, same names out the Bible, same names in the Quran. But the word Noah actually comes from the word new unk. New unk. The word Noah is, Arab, is Hebrew name means new unk. Nuwank, Noah. Nuwank. The word nu means the mother of the primordial substance. Which is talking about going back into the triple stage darkness, the void, the nothingness. And out of that void of nothingness of dark waters, remember the cartoon Dark Water? That's what it was talking about, the new, the aspect of new. Out of that dark water comes forth life. Unk means life. So nuwank means life. The word Noah means life. Why do you think he had all the damn animals on the boat? Mm -hmm. Because he was saving what? Life. Mm -hmm. Not an actual person, but symbolic to you being an actual person. To a mechanism of an actual person. To a process of an actual person. To a conception of an actual person. So you're Noah. Your navel chakra is Noah. It knows how to live. It knows how to survive. By you gathering more energy or flooding this energy, this, this chakra with light, the flood of Ra. Why you think, go back to ancient Kemet and you'll see the only person in ancient Kemet who had a boat was Ra. <laughs> it's called the boat of Ra. The reason why, because Noah was symbolic to Ra, which is energy, light. Life. Same science. The word noose within Latin means mind. Noose means mind. Each of your seven chakras has a consciousness. And consciousness means it has a mind of its own. A particular identity. The lowest chakra is interpersonal consciousness. The navel chakra is intrapersonal consciousness. It means that it has the ability to interact with the things in its surrounding. That's why Noah was able to get all of the animals upon that boat, which was actually the boat of Ra. And he had what? An ark. The ark is nothing more. That is what is called an ark, which is a half circle. And this half circle is actually symbolic for nothing more. As we said the other night at the lecture, is the zodiac sign. The zodiac sign means, the word zodiac means the circle of animals. The word zodiac means circle of animals. The word zodi or zoe, zo means animal. Zoology. 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 Means the study of animals. This is the study of your beastly nature. Your lower nature. This is the study of it. Astrology. That's why you get above your lower nature, which is above astrology. So that means that you can go beyond the bounds and the limits of limitless or karmic influences. It's here that karma begins. But it's here where that shit ends. Because now you're walking in the path of light. You're walking with God now. No longer guessing about who God is. I wonder if God is in the park. I wonder if he's he outside somewhere. Oh, he's the man upstairs. You're looking for a damn UFO or some shit. Oh, he, he's, he's, 
you, you niggas going around. Look at niggas in church. When you go to church, you see niggas. Looking up outside of themselves instead of looking up inside of themselves. You want to know where God is? God is here. God is consciousness, supreme consciousness. That's where, that's, that's it. And you use the consciousness in order to awaken those masses of people who are deaf, dumb, and blind. You have to use God consciousness to awaken those who are deaf, dumb, and blind. This information has to get out. It has to be, it has to be, it has to be properly overstood in order to get out properly so that the masses can properly understand. Because as far as they're concerned, astrology and the information that we talk about is brutal and it's satanic and the Luciferian. They think it's something evil because it contradicts what they was taught as children. But actually, it's not contradicting anything. The only thing that we're doing is explaining the origin of where your concepts come from. You got to understand what you're reading. Mm -hmm. You're reading a book in which that you have no idea on its origin. You're just saying King James Version and blah, blah, blah. And, 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 you know, and you're thinking that it's Genesis and it's Revelations. And you, you know, you're going through the book and reading it as if it took place. Literally. King James just commissioned the writing of that book. He did not uh, write the book for say himself, did he? No, nobody wrote the book per se because the book was copied from off the wall by Arias, and that's what I'm talking about. He traveled. Arias is your Apollonius. The person who they call um, um, Apollonius. Okay, now I'm getting to that. Right, cool. But let me finish through the seals first and I get to Apollonius. Let me just write it up here for you. Remember to go into it. The next one is Abraham. Abraham is your solar plexus. Word solar means sun. Well, ab ra -ham. Ab means father, or either heart within um, um, ancient Kenya. Ra, sun, and ham, black. The father of the fire that ignites or emerges from out of the blackness of triple space darkness. That's what Abraham actually means. The light, the father of light that emerges from out of actually the mother of darkness. Okay. So, Ra means light. The word solar means light. He comes from the land of Ur. Read your Bible and find out where Abraham emerges from. He emerges from out of the land of Ur. Ur within Hebrew means light. Hmm. I don't believe it. Let's take a look at this. Um, let's see here. Let's go check this out. Why Club Dictionary of Biblical. Um, 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 archaeology. Let me see if it's in here. Let me see. It said, this is what it said, Ur, although there are several cities which has to use the same root form, Ur. It says that, let me see here. in Setu comes from the middle or the 5th century B.C. Okay? And then, let's see. The, lo 
Nope. Okay, here it is. The terminology used in Hebrew of the above passage, let me read the above passage. The location of Ur has always been important to the biblical student because of several passages which points to Ur as the home of Abram, or Abraham. Genesis 11, 26, 31, 15, 7. However, other passages also reflect a North Mesopotamian origin for Abraham's family. It should be noted that such patriarchal contact after Abram arrived in Cana or Canaan is the northern area. The terminology used in the Hebrew of the above passage, Ur Kasim, is usually transferred as the So once again it goes right back to the same thing as the light is light. Life is light. from the word Rosh and it means and it has a for the unused root means the head mm. every man excellent first forceful head and check this out. It has a connection even of serpents. Now that means that that would coincide with the fact of the word <laughs> that's deep. Because if we go into it, we find out that the serpents of ancient Egypt was known as. Was known as what? As D. Yes, because uh, Abraham is known as being a priest of the serpents. More, uh, exactly. The serpent priest. Right. Mm -hmm. And then his name, the land of the country, Ur Radius. Ur. Ur means light. Aeus is the same word you get. Zeus, Zeus, with the same word as you get Jesus. Ooh. So that would indicate then that Jesus was the priest of the serpents as well. Did he not say, "Be ye wise as serpents and gentle as doves"? And did he not say that I, being the Son of Man, would lift what be lifted up like Moses in the what like the, like Moses serpents in the wilderness? Continue on. That's why I say this power in the name of Jesus. You just don't know what you're calling on. <laughs> Sounds like you're calling on the serpent. That's what you're calling on. Mm -hmm. The Christ snakes, which is talking about the Ida and the Pingata. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. P I N G A L A. Mm -hmm. The word Ida is means negative or magnetic. The word pingala means electric and positive. These two nerves, they're actually what's called your spinal nerves, which sits near your sacral tailbone, which is actually your sacral nerves. These two sacral nerves lay on the outside of the spine. Let me show you. This is your brain up top here. Let me, I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me see.
33 vertebrates in your back. It's called your spinal cord. 18 inches long, which is X. 6 plus 6 plus 6 equals 18. 18 inches. Now, yeah. Now, um, your spinal column, if you look at it, looks like a snake itself. That's also where the size of the serpent comes from. It's from the actual depiction of what the um, actual spinal, cord, spinal column and spinal cord look like. Inside of it are 31 nerves in which that spreads the information from every component of your physical body to particular organs, to particular muscles, to particular um, um, tissues, to particular cells, nerves. Now, on the outside, right here, now this here is where the kundalini energy resides at. Right here, the navel chakra, solar plexus, heart, throat, chakra is David. The word David within Hebrew means beloved. Beloved. B-E-L-O-V-E-D. So David was symbolic to what? Love. Okay. The throat chakra is Moses. Moses. Why? Because Moses had a speech impediment. He had a problem with speaking, with communicating. Once he learned how to master that, he became a god unto who? Pharaoh. Until that time, Aaron had to do the speaking for him. The word Aaron is the same word, once again, R and on. R means light. And once again, the same thing we just went through is on means sun <coughs> or heaven. So it's the light of heaven who had to do his speaking for him. Aaron, his brother. In other words, this had to do his speaking for him until he was able to move the energy from here to here. Now let's continue on. The sixth chakra is the Christ seat. Why? Because the pituitary gland is known as the feminine seat. The, the feminine organ of the physical body. In other words, this is where Jesus sits at his mother as a child, as a babe, sits at his mother's breast. Have you all seen this picture before? All set in his room? And both of them together? And the reason why he's being nurtured by her is because he plans on taking that energy even to a higher level. Okay? So, he ends up what? Becoming a man, and at the age of 12, he said, he told his mama, I ain't gonna be about my father's business. Why at the age of 12? Because 12 represents, once again, a number of completion. 12 zodiac signs, 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Israel, 12 tribes of, um, 12 prince of Ishmael, 12 sites in your brain. Why? That's because that's where he went. He went now to the brain component, the pineal gland, where he had to go sit with his father, which art in heaven. I will be thy name, thy kingdom come. Where the kingdom resides at? The kingdom of God resides within you. This is where the soul is embedded at, the pineal gland. This is where God exists within you. The physical location of where God exists. This is his throne, his seat. Uh -huh. And they're about they see God on the throne in heaven, but the only way they was able to see that was if they imagined it. And imagination comes from this mug right here, the pineal gland. This is what gives you the ability in order to have dreams. In order to see into other dimensions, into other worlds. You can't see Jack with your two physical eyes closed. Normally can you?
close your eyes right now. Let me put some damn patches. Let me put some patches around your eyes. Let me see. Cut off these damn lights. See, let me let me see your ass walk through hell. <laughs> but with this eye, somehow you're able to see into another whole reality, which seems so real sometimes to you. Like, damn, I know, I know, I was there. I know, go. Oh. Because you actually was there. Who said you wasn't? <laughs> you do Right. The thing is, is that that's where your astral body or your emerge from out of your soul went to that night in order to commune with those astral beings. In other words, other beings of light. The word astral means star. Your physical body is stardust, resonance. It's a residue of stars. That's what you are, a residue of stars. The implosion from the star series B, the sun, and also from the planet Molduk, which is Vulcan, is known as Vulcan within the um, star on the Star Trek. It's called Vulcan. It happened to be the tenth planet, which is was one time situated between Mars and Jupiter. That's what is now known as the asteroid belt. When these planets went through their changes. These energies gathered here to planet Earth. When the implosion of Sirius B happened, our solar system became formed. Our sun is a, resi is a residue of um, energy from Sirius B. And this residue series from um, Sirius B, which became our sun, our sun, cosmic energy, or what's called solar plasma, shot off from it and formed our physical planets. So our physical planets, or what we now know is in particular the Earth that we live on, or us being Earthlings, means that we came from the sun. And through that sun, or through that stargate, we arrived to our real origin, or where we actually came forth from, our whole solar system, is that of Sirius B. That's why the Dogon shows and takes so much interest in Sirius. And it's funny that I showed last week that also the Quran does too. The Quran, the Quran happens to have a mention of the star Sirius in his book. Okay? 50, 53rd chapter. Check this out. The 53rd chapter, or Surah, as it's called. The 49 ayat, or verse. And that he, Allah, is the Lord, Adonai, of the star Sirius. Hmm. Hmm. The Muslims don't understand this book that they have themselves, just like Christians don't understand the Bible. They pretend like they do. Muslims pretend like they understand the Quran more than Christians understand the Bible. And they don't. Majority of the converts, black converts, into Sunni Islam or Orthodox Islam can't speak a lick of Arabic. That means they can't translate themselves what the actual words supposed to be in the Quran. They would tell you for example, I'll give you another example of this right quick. Let me tell you, for example, there's two words in which that they begin off saying that is the name of Allah. There's two words. The book of names includes the 99 names of Allah. Check this out. The first word or the first name that he is called. Oh, Rahman. Oh, Rahman. Oh, 
Remember, you told you that all means what? See? Aharon. Aharon. Ar means light. Ar. What? Rahman. Ra. Man. Arachman. The light within the light of the mind. That's what they mean. They call the word man within the ancient comedic or I guess you would say the ancient or comedic or ancient Egyptian term comes from the word Manu. Manu was uh, one of the so called quote unquote priests who taught, um, who told the Greeks that they was children, that they can never possibly understand the um, damn depth um, metaphysical teachings of the ancient Kemites. Told them off the bat. And it's proved to be true. Mm-hmm. Right. So there is another name is Manithos, but his actual name is Manu. And the word man, or Manu, means he who thinks within Latin. In other words, the mind. The thinker. So when you say the light within the light of the mind of God, that's what that would be. So what I'm saying is, is that Muslims don't understand that, and they just call it what? What? It, what is it? The beneficent. The beneficent. In other words, um, beneficent means what? Giving. Giving. Caring. What? And of course, it is the light. Within the light, within the mind of God. Oh man, that's about as much you can give is light within light. Light, more light, light and more light. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take some of that. <laughs> but the fact that they say El Rahman or El Rahim, El Rahman, check this out. This is A, which is Alif. El. This is Alif. Just a straight line going down, and it's Alif. Alif. A L I F. That's the alphabet. Alif. So that's an A. This here is supposed to be an R. L, which is a lamb first. Lamb. Lamb is L. Lamb. So that's Al, right? Mm-hmm. Al means what? God. But they get the L replaced with a what? Or R. This is a sun, these are sun letters. They made it into Ra, into the sun. Now check this out. That is Ra. Rise, R A A, R A, Ra. That's an A. This is a M, which is a mean, M I I M, mean. And this is a noon. This loop right here. So, El Rahman, El Rahman. So, once again, they trick you by not knowing that they replace the L with an R. So, that means that you don't know that L means God. And that they equivalent it to Ra. You know what I'm saying? So, that means even to Muslims who do in-depth study, they will find out that Ra is what? God. So who are they fooling? Once again, they stole our information from our ancient Kemi. But they profess to a Christian or to those who inquires why they believe that Allah is God. Well, guess what? The word Allah means God. But it also means Ra. Let me show you.
is What you want to see is that this <laughs> uh, What somebody say? No, no, no. He's thinking off the rack. <laughs> what you gonna what you gonna see is a nigga with his um, on his back with his legs and arms up in the air doing a yoga position. Which comes from arm, leg, leg, arm, head. Well hold on, what the hell do this look like? That's a head. That's a head. That's what that is. This is a leg. Or uh, arm, excuse me, arm and two legs. Even the picture graph tells you that it's man. The picture graph of Allah written in Arabic shows you that it's a man. Well, hold on. Let's check this out one more time here. I hear some correspondence on Sirius, too. Oh, yeah. Osiris and Sirius. Exactly. Yeah. Sirius mm -hmm. means... The word Isis... Sirius meaning real, right? True. Sirius means real. Honesty, you know, right. Peace and home and whatnot. Exactly. So. The word Osiris... Is where the word serious originates from. Let's check this out. <laughs> check this out. It's tough. Within Arabic, the equivalent word of Allah within Hebrew would be Yahweh, or who is known as Yahuwah or Yahweh. Now check this out. Let me, let me do a little bit bigger for y'all can see. Let's see what you do. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now, y'all gonna keep this a lot. Now, watch this shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the right That's what you're doing right now. <laughs> this, this is the body of man. Check this out. This symbol right here is fire. It's a symbolic to fire. That's why you actually, what this is, is a flame. And it's talking about your head. Your head is the flame, the holy of holies. Mm. The reason why your flame is the head because when the kundalini energy rises up and it shoots to the head, you gain a glow around it, which looks like fire, a golden light. Please pass me that picture. Put this right here. Right, that's a flame. You see that flame at the top of the head? You see complete aluminum. You see, complete illumination is a light at the top of your head. That's why we're dealing with Ur for right now out of um, out of this um, whole Hebrew, um, Hebrew and Arabic what thing. What is that drawing? Is that is that a word? Yeah. This yeah is, I'm word. getting ready to break it down. It's a word. Ready to break, it's a word. Oh. Now check this out. You see this light? This is the fire which that illuminates from out of the top of the head. True. You see how wide this illumination is as compared to the chakras in which that is inside of the body? Right. Mm. Because this is supreme illumination, is when this energy or life force or kundalini energy raises to the head area and illuminates you. This is what is meant by the rubbing of Atlantis, of um, um, Aladdin's lamp. And what comes out of it? Genius. Or better yet, genius. You become a genius when the light of the lamp is lit. By you massaging your brain, by working out things, by actually becoming awoken and conscious, you illuminate this so-called vessel. So, Yad is the number five. This is what is called He, or He. This here is what is known, now, now if you notice, this here, you keep, keep your eyes on this here now. Head, arms, right, legs, see? I'm just gonna keep your eyes on that right there and you know, we, we, we gonna see the science of the law and the science of the Hebrew terminology here. This here is a wah, or a va, as they call it. Sometimes you see it as a va. 
that's some um some Jewish shit because they couldn't pronounce the um W, so they say Va, <laughs> which is German. Okay, now, you know just like um you know Bugs Bunny could never say the R word. He always say um Rascally Waddy. Slowly. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so this is what's called um, um, Yiddish. Okay, this is not actual Hebrew. Actual Hebrew is the letters that I'm putting over here on the side. And then again, Ha, which they call He. Y H W H. Now, what they did was add the A's to that. So you get Y. A H A W A H Yahawa Yahawa Hawa Yah, as I told you before, means oh. <laughs> oh. Hawa means life. Oh, life. That's good word, life. Oh, life giver. You only even give life if you're on your back. So actually, a lot actually is a lot, and which is symbolic to actually the woman. And this symbol is actually symbol to the woman bestowing life or giving birth. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, boy, 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 they done fooled us again. Allah is <laughs> the, the ancient pre quote unquote Arabian deity or goddess or the supreme goddess during that time period, because the Arabs used to worship the goddess. It was a matriarchal society before so-called Prophet Muhammad came in, which was actually an imaginary character, in which that the Catholic Church by the Pisces family made up, came in and changed a lot from a feminine aspect to a law, a masculine aspect. Ain't no man Giving nothing of no life source except for the sperm. And guess what? It's not a law, and he will become a law. He. And the woman is a law. Who? Now check this out. Let me break this down a little bit more here. Let me this down a little bit more here. Take out the word Allah. He and Allah. Who? The you is symbolic to the womb. See that out? What you think that is? The semen. The net. We can just see that simple way. Well, 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 it's 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 like it. What was it? It's this, the this, the 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 this, the sun, this yeah. of Ra. And Ra Ra. state into a humanoid state, just like you carry in with the circle of the animal. And what, and what, matter of fact, what do they call a child when it just enters into particular or the earliest stages of life? A zygote. Remember when we say the word zy or zoe? It means what? So the womb is the ark of life, the new ark, the new ark, Noah. The woman is Noah. Check this out. Let's continue on. 
This turned out right. And this going in. There you go. The symbol of life. If not the arc, what? A fertility symbol? Of course, the top circle represents what? Life? Or better yet, the will of life? Remember, we just showed you life up here. But this life begins down here in this second brain before it can reach this first brain. Or vice versa. So you really don't know which one is which. But maybe that's the mystery of life. <laughs> because actually, we're going with metaphysics. And from Atom, you get the word Adam. That, that's how obvious that is. And then how it's even more obvious is the word atom that they call your atomic structure or your physical body. Okay? And from Adam came Shu, as I told you before, that's Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. So, hold up. If Adam came first, but then Shu, and Shu is John Zeus, then who is Adam? Mm -hmm. 